This video is going to be about trial and improvement. It's a mathematical method which where you basically try different answers and you keep getting closer and closer to the answer. It was called in my day trial and error and still is often called trial and error. But we're going to call it trial and improvement. You might say that name is a slight improvement on trial and error. To do the method of trial and improvement, we would need to be given an equation that we're trying to solve. Let's do something like x cubed plus 2x minus 6 equals 50. Now we're looking to this for the solution to that equation. But frankly, doing it the normal way or trying to factorize or trying to solve it in some different way would actually be really quite tough and there's a simpler way of going about it it's not quite as accurate but it's a good way of going what you need for trial and improvement is a nice lovely table that is not a nice lovely table so I'm going to take away the green and this table will help us answer the question which we're given the question would be something like this. This equation above has a solution between 3 and 4. So you'll always be given a range, usually between two different numbers that are next to each other, that our solution is in between. So this equation has a solution between 3 and 4 find this solution to one decimal place and thank goodness they said one decimal place because if we had to find our answer even more accurately than that it would take quite a long time indeed but one decimal place I think we can we can manage that what is this table then the first column is where we place our attempt as in the number that we're going to use here, because we're talking about x's, this can be our x column. Let's make that a bit bigger. Our next column is going to be the answer that we get when we use that x in the equation. And our final column is our conclusion, as in our comment on what our answer was. Was it below 50, bigger than 50, or exactly on 50? I'll be, I'll be honest, in trial improvement you're rarely going to be exactly on 50. You're usually going to be a bit too small or a bit too big. Okay, let's start out. What would you pick as your first x to place inside this equation? Well, we know that the answer is going to be between 3 and 4, but many students pick 3 or 4 to start off with. The thing is, we know 3 is going to be too small and we know 4 is going to be too big because it said this equation has a solution between 3 and 4 so I would pick 3.5 always pick halfway okay 3.5 now our answer is what we do when we put 3.5 inside that equation to put it inside the equation wherever you see an x replace it with a 3.5 so in this case 3.5 cubed plus 2 times 3.5 take away 6 now notice all I've done is I've replaced the x up here with a 3.5 now we need a calculator 3.5 cubed is that plus 2 times 3.5 is this and take away 6 is 43.8 now what's our conclusion well we were aiming for 50 so this is too small we can write that as our conclusion if 3.5 was too small let's try 3.7 how we do that? You might be able to guess. We're going to replace x with 
So it's going to be 3.7 cubed plus 2 times by 3.7 minus 6. And what does that equal? Let's do it in the calculator. 3.7 cubed, we'll start to go a bit faster now, plus 2 times 3.7, take away 6. That's 52.0. That is actually too big. Remember, we're aiming for 50, so 52 is too big. What do you reckon we should try next? I reckon we should try 3.6. 3.6. So we would do 3.6 cubed plus 2 times 3.6 take away 6. And what does that equal? 3.6 cubed plus 2 times 3.6 take away 6. That's 47.8 or 47.9 if we round it off. And what is 47.9? It's too small. We're aiming for 50. It is too small but we're getting closer. 3.6 was too small and 3.7 was too big. Now, this is the only time that we're going to attempt something which has two decimal places. Notice so far we've picked 3.6, 3.7. For this next one, we're going to pick exactly in between 3.6 and 3.7, which is 3.65. But we only do this right at the end and only once. I see many students doing 3.61 or 3.62 or something like that. To be honest, that is kind of a waste of time. Just pick halfway between 3.6 and 3.7. The reason we're doing that is so that we can see whether the actual answer is going to be closer to 3.6 or 3.7. And then one of those two is going to be our answer. Why is one of these two going to be our answer? It's because we can only pick to one decimal place. So it has to be one of those two. 3.65 definitely can't be our answer. It's just something we're going to use to find our answer. Let's try that then. We have 3.65 cubed plus 2 times 3.65. Take away 6. And what does that equal? Let's get our calculator. 3.65 cubed plus 2 times 3.65 take away 6. That's 49.92. So 49.9. Now you might be tempted to write bang on, as in we've got it. But actually it's still too small. We were aiming for 50, so 49.9 is still too small. So, what's our final answer going to be? Our final answer can't be 3.65. I know we really want it to be 3.65. We really do, because it's so close. But the question said one decimal place. In fact, the question will always, almost always say one decimal place. So our answer can't be 3.65, that's two decimal places. We have to pick between 3.6 and 3.7. Now if 3.65 was too small, is our answer going to be closer to 3.7 or 3.6? Well if 3.65 was a bit too small, our answer must be a bit closer to 3.7. So a bit bigger than that. And if it's a bit closer to 3.7, our final answer is indeed 3.7. So to one decimal place, the answer to this question is 3.7. I would recommend reviewing this video and practicing a few more on your own.